What's up everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Kyle. Today we're going to break down what it looks like to purchase a home here in Red Deer, Alberta. We're gonna walk through the entire buying process so that by the end of this video, hopefully it's clear as mud to you. Buying a home does not have to be a stressful process. So let's get into it. All right, let's dive into step number one. Let's take a look at kind of where to live in Red Deer. It's kind of just a big, broad, general overview. Now, most people will probably tell you that the south end is more desirable to live in than the north end. This is kind of where all the best shopping is. The city has been going south for the last two or three decades. These are where all the new developments are. The north end has not got a lot of love in the last little while. There is a new development set to take place called Hazlat Lake, but I think that the North End kind of gets its bad rap from one or two neighborhoods. If you're not living in these areas, it's really, there are some really good areas. I've had a lot of clients move to Kentwood and they love it there, which is on the very Northern border. I've had a lot of clients move to Johnstone. I'm a big fan of Johnstone, the old Oriole Park, as well as the newer part, the Oriole Park West version. So there are still some really good areas to live in on the North End. You just wanna make sure that you are in the right neighborhood. But on the South End, anywhere along the South is a good area from West Lake, all along the southern border to the southeast corner where you have Laredo and Vanier East. All along the eastern border of the city is really good. There's just a lot of really good neighbors to live within the city. And if you are not looking to live right within the city, there is a lot of really good smaller cities and smaller towns that are super close to Red Deer and are a very easy commute. Now, I'm not going to get too descriptive on these ones. I've done an entire video on them and we'll link it up here or here. I'm not sure exactly where it will be. And we'll put it in the description down below. Hey, okay, so where's the link? Why didn't no one send me the link? But some really good options will be Black Falls. It's just about 13 kilometers out of the north side of Red Deer. We have Lacombe, which is about 25 minutes north. We have the ever popular Lake Town, Sylvan Lake, which which is 15 minutes out of the west side of Red Deer, which is a double lane highway the whole way. And there is a smaller town called Penhold, which a lot of people don't realize is there. It's got about 3,500 people and it's just south of Gaston Alley, about five minutes away from Costco. So watch that video, dive into some of those areas. Again, if you don't wanna live right within the city, there are a lot of great options to live just outside the city as well. Cutting in here really quick, if you guys would like any help making the move here to Red Deer, Alberta, I am a licensed realtor in the area. I'd love the opportunity to earn your business. So please use this information popping up, get a hold of me any way you'd like, would love to hear from you. All right, back to the video. All right, now that you've figured out where you wanna live, let's take a look at step number two, and that's connecting with a realtor and getting the pre-qualification process started with your finances. So getting pre-approved is super, super important, especially in this market. As a seller's market, many times you're going into multiple offer situations and it's very competitive. Lots of times the sellers, they're asking to see a commitment letter or a pre-approval letter from your lender. They wanna make sure that if they do accept your offer, you're not gonna be wasting their time and your finances aren't gonna, going to get approved and they can go with somebody else. Now, it's also really, really important to know what your budget is. Until you sit down with that lender, you don't know what your budget is and what you can be approved for. So it sucks if you're looking at, you know, you're only approved up to 500,000, but you're falling in love with the home that's listed, that's at 600,000 and you wanna buy that one and you go back to the lender and you find out because you didn't do that legwork that you don't qualify for that high of a mortgage. Now, people often ask me, should I go with a mortgage broker or should I use a bank? Now, if you have a good relationship with your bank and you've been banking with them for a long time, sure, they're a great option as well. But if you're kind of on the fence and you're trying to decide, should I use a mortgage broker or should I go with a bank? I personally would recommend using a mortgage broker. This Mortgages are their bread and butter. This is what they do day in and day out. They have access to all of the major lenders as well as private lenders that aren't accessible to the public. And they are going to go between all of these different lenders and negotiate the best rates and terms for your mortgage. I am calling a realtor right now. Hello, Kyle, thank God it's you. Now, if you're just going to a bank, again, not saying that it's bad, but RBC is only going to offer you 
an RBC product, they're not gonna tell you that the bank down the road or this lender is offering better interest rates. So in my opinion and my recommendation, if it was me, I would use a mortgage broker before I used a bank. Now, while you're getting pre-qualified, this is also a great time to connect with a realtor that you think you might wanna work with. You can sit down with them, you can come up with the best plan on what that looks like for you. And it's also super important to connect with a realtor to get set up on the multiple listing service and get off of these third-party sites that you've been shopping for homes on like realtor.ca and Zillow and Trulia. These sites are great. They're, you know, you can kind of keep an eye on the market and get an idea of what's happening on the market, but they're not accurate and they're not updated in real time. Off that website, I'd hire you. So a lot of the homes that you are looking at, they could already be under contract or they could be sold. So this is why it is super important to get set up on the multiple listing service for the area. This is where realtors put all of their listings and this is the most accurate site to choose homes that you want to look at. All right, let's move on to step number three. Let's get into the fun part of purchasing a home. You've already done the boring legwork. You've got your pre-approval in place. You've met with a realtor. You've come up with a strategy. Now it is time to start looking at homes. Now there's kind of three main options when it comes to looking at properties. Now, these won't apply if you're here, you already live in the area, maybe you're from Red Deer or from Alberta, you're already in the area so you can view homes with your realtor, you can see them in person and get a good feel for them. Now, a lot of the times there's a lot of people moving here from out of province and you need to decide kind of what the best plan of attack for you is going to be. So I kind of break it down into three main options. The first one, and this is the one that I think about 85 to 90% of my clientele over the last two years have used, and that is purchasing a home through virtual viewings on apps like FaceTime, Zoom, or if you have an Android, you use Google Meet. This is how most people have made their purchases over the last two years. Now, I know it sounds crazy. You know, you're going to buy a home, you're going to spend $300,000, $500,000, $600,000 buying a home through video, but on these video calls, I've had a lot of clients tell me that they see more details about the home than they would if they're actually there in person. And that's because one, I have OCD, and two, I'm not trying to talk you out of buying the home, but I feel like it's my job to show you everything that is wrong with the home. So I'm gonna point out all of that stuff. And again, I'm not trying to say the home is bad, or I'm not trying to talk you out of buying it. I just need you to see everything that's wrong with it. So when you do get here, we're on possession day, you're not like, what the hell, dude? You didn't tell me that the place smells like cat shit. You didn't tell me that this looks like a DIY. Ugh, it smells damp. We're going to get super specific. We're gonna look at all finishings. We're gonna talk about smells. We're gonna look at the neighbors. Does the neighbor have five cars and a junk pile and flicking you know, cigarette butts on your lawn? We're going to look at everything. I also utilize my drone quite a bit as well. So I had a client who moved here from BC. We were looking at a newer residential development kind of out on Gaslane Alley. It's in the county of Red Deer. It's called Liberty Landing. And just from working with her over a couple of weeks, I kind of had a feeling of what she liked and didn't like, but she really liked a home there and she wanted to write an offer on it. So I didn't think that she would really like the area though. So I popped up my drone. I gave her a good aerial view of everything. And she's like, you know what? I'm so glad that you did that because I absolutely would not enjoy living in this area. She ended up buying a house in Sylvan Lake. So we utilize all of these tools that we have. We utilize the drone, of course, weather permitting and you know that I'm able to fly it up. But I wanna give you guys as much detail and as much as I can about the property. So the first option is doing it virtually. The second option, what a lot of clients have been doing as well, is they'll plan a trip out here. So whether it's three days, four days, a weekend, whatever it is, they plan a trip out here, they have a list of properties that they wanna see, and we try and bang those out as quick as we can. Now, a little bit of a time crunch on this one, and we also, we have to get a little bit lucky, so hopefully, you know, one of those homes that we do look at, you actually like and you wanna write an offer on, or something pops up while you're here that you want to write an offer on. Again, I had another client who was just here last week from BC. We did this exact thing, we, we had three days booked of showings. We actually found a home on the first day. We were able to get in there without going into multiple offers. We got the property tied up and we're going through our due diligence phase right now. Now, if you are out here and you don't find anything, at the very least, now you've had a chance to explore the areas. You know they areas and neighborhoods that you like and you don't like. So when you do go back to wherever province you're coming from or whatever country you're coming from, we can now go virtual. And you have a lot more confidence in making that purchase because you've been here and you've explored the areas. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Never have before. I wanna live here. 
What? This house is incredible. Now the third option, and this one has been used the least out of all the clients that I've helped over the last couple of years. I think one client has done this. And that of course is to, if you have a home to sell, to sell that home, or if you're renting, clear everything up from wherever you're coming from and move out to Alberta, move out to Red Deer, rent a home, whether it's a short-term rental, six month or one year. And then you're actually physically here to look at homes. Now, a lot of people don't like that because they don't wanna rent. The rental market is very tight out here in Alberta super super competitive so there's so many people moving here right now that it can be super tough to find a rental and if you have a young family and you have pets this just kind of adds a whole nother element to it all right let's move on to step number four let's talk about what it looks like when you found the home and it's time to submit an offer now if you're working with me if you found a home that you want to potentially submit an offer on, I'm going to get on the phone with that listing realtor and try and get as much, much information as possible. We want to know kind of what the seller is looking for in regards to things like possession dates. And we definitely want to know if we are going into multiple offer situations because this is definitely going to affect the offer that we submit. Now, when you are going into multiple offer situations, there are a few ways that you can make your offer look a little bit more attractive. Obviously, what a lot of people look at is what type of price you're offering. We can give the, the seller the possession date they're looking for. We're not going to have any crazy terms or conditions in there. So we're not going to come back with, we want the house professionally cleaned or this or that. We want to make the offer look as clean as possible. We're going to try and tighten up those condition deadlines too. So if we have a finance condition or a property inspection there, typically they allow in a normal offer, 10 business days, we try and tighten those up to five or seven business days to make it look a little bit more attractive. And we can increase our good faith deposit. And we're going to talk about this later on in the video. Now, once we have all this information, we're going to sit down and kind of come up with what a good offer is going to look like. We're going to draw it up and we're going to send it off to the other side. From there, we are going to go back and forth until we come to an agreement on all of the terms, all the conditions, the price, the possession date. And once we come to an agreement, both parties sign on the dotted line saying that they agree to everything. This is when the offer now becomes an accepted offer. Now, this is kind of also when people start to panic a little bit. They're like, oh my goodness, I just bought a house. God, this is my house. This is my house. Whoa, 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 don't celebrate yet. No, you did not buy the house yet. Now we move into the buyer's due diligence phase. So whatever conditions we have in the contract, so typically we're having, if you're not paying cash, we have a finance condition and we have a property inspection. This is when we move into that phase, whether it's 10 business days, five business days, seven business days, or whatever it is to satisfy these conditions. And at this point, the buyer has the option to back out of the contract if they don't like anything that comes up in their property inspection or something doesn't look right with their finances or it doesn't get approved, they have the option of backing out of the contract at this point. Now the property is not sold until you waive your conditions. We call this firm sold. So again, if we have a property inspection condition, we have a finance condition, the inspection comes back and it looks good, you're happy with it, or there's just some minor things that we need to negotiate on, your finances are approved, we sign that waiver, waiving those conditions, this is now when the house is firm sold and this is now when you have bought the house. Now, something else that's really important to talk about when you submit an offer is the good faith deposit. So anytime you submit an offer on a home, you have to provide the seller with a deposit. So this shows the seller that you're serious about buying their home. You have some skin in the game. Now this deposit is 100% refundable if you do not waive conditions. So something again, something comes up in the inspection, you don't like it, you don't waive that condition, you sign a non-waiver, that deposit comes back to you. Now, when you can lose this deposit, is if you do waive your conditions and then you decide to back out of the deal. So if your realtor sends you over a waiver waiving all the conditions of the contract, you sign on the dotted line, and then after that you decide to back out of the contract, that is when the seller can keep your good faith deposit and you open yourself up to litigation. So you definitely do not want to do this in this scenario. Now, the good news is, is that it is just a deposit. This comes back to you at closing. It will get applied to your down payment or it comes back to you at closing. So it is not an expense. It is just something you need to have access to. Typically, it needs to be submitted to the seller's brokerage within three business days of the time the offer gets accepted. So if, you know, if it's tied up in RSPs or something, 
you want to make sure that you're able to get them out within that time frame and get it accepted or get it submitted because if it's not submitted on time the seller does have the option to back out of the contract all right let's move on to the next step let's talk about what it looks like after remove conditions moving forward on to possession day now once you remove conditions the home is now firm sold as we discussed this is when the lawyers take over so just prior to possession, the lawyers are going to reach out to you and you don't have to reach out to them. If you're your realtor, if you're working with me again, I will send all your information off to them. They'll reach out to you just prior to possession. Now, if you're in the area, you'll go into the office for signing. They need to witness you signing. A lot of the times though, people are coming from out of province, British Columbia or Ontario. So this needs to be done virtually. The lawyers will send you the documents electronically. From there, they will set up a video call with you where you will they'll have to witness you signing the documents and then the originals will have to be couriered back to the lawyers. Now, during this time frame, from the waiver of conditions to possession dates, you probably won't have a lot of conversation with your realtor unless you have some specific questions. You will see your realtor on possession day. Now, on possession day, realtors have zero control as to when the keys are released. Here in Alberta, it says that the contract or the seller is supposed to provide the buyer with vacant possession by noon. So definitely do not plan or book movers before that time. I would say even a little bit after 12 o'clock is probably the best scenario. But realtors have no control over when the keys are released. That is all up to the lawyers. Once the money changes hands on possession days, the lawyers will call and say keys are released. And at that point, the, the, your, your realtor will pick up the keys and meet you at the property. And this is where we go through the final walkthrough. Now this final walkthrough is super important. So anything say that came up in the inspection that we negotiated that the seller needed to fix, we wanna make sure that this stuff is done and all the receipts have been provided to the lawyer so that we have proof. And we gotta go through the whole property to make sure that everything is in the same condition or better as when we viewed it. So we're testing things like furnace, hot water tanks, all the appliances, garage doors and garage door openers. We need to go through the entire property and make sure everything is working as it should be because we only have until the end of the day to let the lawyers know if there is an issue. Now, usually possession days, they're a super fun day, super exciting. Things usually go off without a hitch. I think one time, we tested the hot water tank and the hot water wasn't working, so we had to get the seller to fix that. But usually it's a really good, easy, smooth process. So super fun day, possession days are super important to do that final walkthrough. Now let's talk about one final step. Let's talk about cost to expect when buying a home and things to do and get set up. Now when it comes to cost, I mean, we already talked about the good faith deposit. Again, this isn't a cost, but it is money you need to have access to and it does come back to your closing needs to be submitted within three business days, whatever is specified within the contract. Now, property inspections. I highly recommend getting a property inspection. I personally would never buy a home without a property inspection, and I would never advise a client not to buy a home without a property inspection. So in this area that I am, the company that I use or the companies that I use are 525 plus GST. Now, there could be appraisals. So if you're putting down 20% or more, you do not have to get mortgage default or default mortgage insurance. So the bank is going to order an appraisal because if you do default on your mortgage and this insurance isn't in place, they want to make sure that you they can get their money back if they have to sell your property. Typically this, and it's based on square footage, but this can range anywhere from $350 to $550 and it will be at a cost to you. Now let's talk about lawyer fees. Now this can vary depending on what they need to do. I tell clients to typically budget about $1,500. This can be a little more, it could be a little bit less. I wouldn't bake on it being less, but there can also be things like disbursements. And an example of a disbursement would be, for example, say you bought a house today, what are we in April? So, and the seller has paid their property taxes for the entire year the lawyers would calculate right down to the day what you would have to reimburse the seller for, for their property taxes. Oh really, because it's it's low 40s here. Wait, what are you talking about? And of course you wanna factor in moving costs and what that looks like for you, but let's kind of touch on some things that you wanna make sure you get done before you make that move, some things to get set up. So this is super important, despite telling clients and reminding them a lot of the times they forget to get their utilities set up or their internet or cable, their electricity or gas. But let's talk about electricity and gas. Here in Alberta, it's unregulated. So you do have options. You can choose from a lot of different providers. A site that I like to use and tell people about is ucahelps.alberta.ca. You can 
use their cost comparison tool. You can go on there. You can look at all the rates and compare them and figure out which one works best for you. Now, some of the more popular providers here in Alberta are NMAX, ATCO, and Direct Energy. There are some other ones, but those are the most popular. And you wanna make sure you get things set up like your internet, your cable, and your TV. Now, some of the more popular providers for internet and TV are places like Shaw and Telus. Rogers as well. You can find some resellers who sell the same product that Shaw and Telus offers, but at a discounted rate because of their business model. So definitely something to look into. And of course, you're going to want to get your utility set up through the city or whatever municipality that you're moving to. It's one of the smaller towns that surround Red Deer. So your water, your wastewater, and your waste collection, that is all going to come through the municipality or the city of Red Deer. So I hope this sheds some light on the buying process. We don't buy and sell homes all the time. I, you know, it can be a little bit of a daunting process, but really it doesn't have to be. So if you did like the video, I'd really appreciate it if you guys hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, click that notification bell so you're notified every week when a new video comes out. And if we'd like any help with real estate needs, use this information popping up on the screen right now. Get a hold of me any way you'd like. We'd love to hear from you. All right, see you next week.